Now, I love video games, so much so that I thought, why not actually make a game? Which is what I am doing right now as we speak. Well, not literally, but I've been working on one. So I will be showing you that today. Now, to start off, I just had a little square. Well, actually, no, I had a little person and it looked very ugly. Uh, I don't like it. And so for the meantime, I stuck with the square and the square looks decent, looks better than this thing. Once I had my little square that can move around, I gave him a little room that he can move around in. But something still just didn't feel right. It felt as if round was not detailed enough. Yeah, I know, that's really stupid of me. Why the heck, when I'm first making the game, my first thought is, oh, let me change the ground. The ground doesn't look good enough. Let's polish the ground and make it look really pretty. But in reality, I couldn't figure out what to do with the ground. I mean, I did a cool grass effect that when you stepped on it, it would squish the grass kind of like you're actually walking on it. But then I tried all these weird things like grass particles and they just didn't work out for me. I couldn't find what I wanted. First, I did an animation and that just looked freaking weird. It looked like little crystals popping up beneath your feet. And then I tried adding particles to the equation, but those guys didn't want to work either. It just made way too many and they looked too big and obvious and it kind of just got in the way. But I'm still happy with the grass squishing effect, so I'll just leave it to that for now. Now, I wanted to enhance my room experience. You see, this is a small room, okay? I need to have some fun in here. I need to have some sort of activity in this little underground basement I have here. So basically what I did was I added a crate or I tried to. You see, this crate really didn't want to work. It didn't want to cooperate. The hitbox thing didn't work. It just, every time I would bump into it, I'd go through it. And then when I did get the collision to work, then it was having issues with the moving of the crate. But eventually I got a work at work where you could push the crate, jump on top of the crate and climb on top to get up into the next room. Then you would walk over where you already were and go down into the next room. And this place is where it gets interesting. You see, I wanted to make spikes here and this would make it so when you touch the spikes, you get damaged and you go back where you were. You would appear back in time kind of i mean like you would pop up at a certain spot so you don't just stick on the spikes and keep dam making damage so it's like a little penalty as well as damage now although i didn't get the damage mechanic working i did get the whole thing where when you touch the spikes you go back and uh it looks pretty neat actually um so you hit the spikes and you go up but you don't want to do that so you don't hit the spikes and you don't go up so most likely you're never going to see that because it's so easy to just avoid the spikes in the first place However, later on, I will have more difficult platforming where the spikes will be less avoidable. Finally, I added one more crate and this one, I had to add a little bit of gravity to it. And uh, that was a whole story in itself because I found that it was way easier to add gravity to the player for some reason, because I followed a little bit of a tutorial kind of thing for that. But for this, I didn't. And so this was a whole new experience for me. But eventually I did get the crate to work. So first you're in this one little room, then you push this crate, jump on top, go back over the room you were in, squish the yummy grass. Once you fall into the next room, you have these little spike things. Yes, I know all the sprites look ugly here. I have a friend of mine working on a um, some really good art. They are really good artists and um, I'm excited to be able to put that stuff in the game. So, uh, yeah, credit to them. I'm gonna put a credit section at the end as well, but extra credit to them, mega credit to them for the art. Um, so basically, once you're in this room, you jump over these spikes, push this crate on top of these other spikes in order to get through. And yeah, bum pronto, you're through. And I actually added a little secret in this area. I know you can't see it because you can't play the game, but there's a way to activate a little secret. And I'm not gonna show it, because if I ever do actually make this into a playable game thing, then uh, you might want to find out for yourself what that secret is. And I want you to find out for yourself what that secret is. So I'm going to leave it a mystery. All right, guys. Thank you so freaking much for uh, watching. I want to... I know this kind of silly because my channel is so small. So I wouldn't even call this really a shout out. But I just want to say, like... Huge thank you to Luke Krimmers. I, I hope I pronounced that 
correctly, um, from the game maker of the game Decay, because that really inspired me to pick up this project again. This was kind of something I had started a while back, and I just didn't really feel like motivated to sit there and do hours of coding. But I spent over 20 hours already just designing this little tiny bit here and you know what it's freaking worth it i love it ever i love every minute of it now and I, yeah i just that game decay it really motivated me to pick this up again because that game looks freaking epic i mean it's fantastic it, like freaking check it out it's in the description please and so yeah make sure to subscribe if you want a second devlog and a bunch of other devlogs and stuff on my little game thing so yeah thanks Bye. Oh, yeah, and here's the credits. Uh, some awesome people helped me out.